Hi there, this is part two of the Hikmicro TQ50C review video. So you've seen the unboxing and Bruce and I already recorded last week a bit of a man cave video where he goes through what he and we thought would be the one disadvantage of the three modes of using the TQ50C. So you've got spotter, rifle scope and front end add-on. And we thought the latter of those three would be the weak link. Maybe not, have to wait and watch. But in the meantime, I thought it better to record some menu functions. The TQ50C doesn't have an external microphone, nor does it record while you're in the menu. So this is my handy Brucey bonus plate. Thanks again, Bruce. And I've got a handy mobile phone holder on the back. So I've raised the scope with some mounts I had in my bits box. And that then means the mobile phone, which is my video camera, was able to be held here, focused through the eyepiece. I'm gonna talk you through the whole display. Also, when you're in the menu function, the background is not blank, the background is whatever's going on. So I drove down to Stonehaven Harbour last night, recorded going through the menus and the reticles, and hopefully it'll all be clear. It was all recorded on the TQ50C on this plate, on a tripod, via a mobile phone, and also I've got some footage two nights earlier. I went out in a bit, a bit miserable, Drich as they call it up in Aberdeenshire, and uh, I had both scopes set up on this plate. So I was using the PAD LRF to range a few landmarks. So I'll start the video with that, go on through the menu functions, and we'll take it from there. You've seen from my unboxing video the basics of the menu, but there's a few cool shortcuts, like if I press the zoom button for three or four seconds, the reticle appears. Now I'll come back to the reticle in a minute, but for now, get that back off. There we go. So in spotter mode, you don't want the reticle, especially not if you're recording wildlife, etc. You don't want people thinking you're shooting them. A quick press of the central menu button and the OSD, on-screen display, appears or disappears from top right. So in top right, you've got times one digital zoom, which shows that it's a, the native 2.6 optical base mag with the 50 mil Germanian lens, F1 lens. Beside that, you've got the small icon of an SD card, which is quite cool. You might just be able to see a, a tiny bar in the bottom of the SD card logo. It's already holding about five gig of recordings from Bruce and I, and that's just showing a tiny amount of uh, data on board. So that's pretty cool for long recording sessions. Uh, next to that, the battery function. If Wi-Fi was enabled, if you were using the app, then on the left-hand side of the One X symbol, there'd also be a Wi-Fi symbol. Let's show you a bit more of the harbour. Don't forget, we're looking, we're not looking through a black and white camera. This is a thermal camera. Uh, oh, and there we go. We've got some wildlife down there. Oh, and some people walking past in the distance. 
that's about uh, 200 meters away back to the reason we're here to go through the menus so if I go to central menu button a long press on the central button pulls up the menu starts always starts on brightness and the camera and plus minus buttons step up or down through the menu functions back to brightness and sequential presses of the menu button take up to th four five and back to one so you can see that three is pretty ideal there next one up we've got contrast again contrast steps up four five one two and back to three network off in fact it's not showing wi-fi um, battery voltage 3.7 volts you've got to set it for rechargeables or non-rechargeable batteries and when you do that it's more efficient and your battery status in the top right hand corner on the osd will be a lot more realistic hot tracking off actually with a few birds on the screen if i put that on ah oh, right there's a oh i see there's a green cross let's see if i can focus on those birds yep the birds are being picked up as hot symbols so i'll pop that off i'm not bothered with hot track oh, people walking in the distance that's about 260 meters away i think 250 260 thereabouts so next one up through the menu is measure now this is range finding and it's steady metric range finding which it's pretty standard on non-LRF scopes, so it's not a lot of use. I never ever use it. On-screen display, so you can set that on and off, but obviously there's a hotkey as I just explained. Um, time sync, date and time, trajectory. This is a function I'll show you in a minute but when I get to some of the reticles. Language and restore to base settings. Version, let's see what version we're on. Uh, there we go so just for your information burn prevention on now i thought this was going to be to prevent the sensor of burning out if you were to point it at the sun accidentally bruce thought that at first as well but he reckons that the burn prevention is actually a bit like um, plasma tvs it used to have uh, burn prevention because if you left the tv showing the same thing for a long period it would actually retain a memory of what was on the screen so put that back off DPC that's defective pixel correction so like uh, most thermal scopes and many night vision scopes uh, you can correct or switch off defective pix pixels CVBS or I'll pop it up on the screen auto flat field correction ie calibration so it's on auto at the moment and every 20 to 30 seconds the image will freeze for less than half a second it doesn't take long to correct at all and by pressing the right hand button on the menu i can get it to calibrate whenever i wish um, so it's on auto at the moment anyway color off well those birds are on screen try a bit of zoom oh no actually i'm gonna go out the menu for a second so that's two times four times eight times and that's birds about 120 meters away so that's one thing with the zoom and most of the menu functions, subsequent presses you're stepping up one, two, three, four, five, or in this case of zoom, two, four, eight, and back to one. So you can't go up and down. You just go up and then back to the start. So let's get the menu back on. All right, so back to where we were. Right, I'll, I'll show you pip as well. So pip, you can have a top left, top center, and top right and obviously when it's top right it uh, obscures the osd the on-screen display so you can see the magnification there the outboard motor of that uh, fishing boat there's a guy walking past in the distance so the picture in picture shows double the mag of whatever mags on the main screen up to the point of eight and it stays at eight see mode by the way you've got recognition jungle recognition or jungle well the other cute thing by the way is the pip icon itself shows top left top middle top right back to the main article reticle so this is for zeroing 
X plus 12, Y plus 22, that was Bruce's zero with his rimfire rifle at 60 meters. So this is reticle one. That's reticle two, which is a cross with a dot. Actually, go back to back to reticle one. Right. Oh, there's a jogger just gone past. So he's very warm, haven't been jogging. If I choose colour, uh, if I go back and go to colour and step through to white. Here I was hoping to bring you a nice clear demonstration of the sparkle effect, as Bruce and I call it, whereby every individual pixel of the reticle goes black if there's a white background or white if there's a black background. But I didn't realise it doesn't work if I have the menu enabled. You'll see that effect in some of the upcoming clips anyway. Stay in reticle. Um, so in reticle one, and something else if I show you, reticle one is the extremities of the reticle think of as second focal plane. The core of the reticle is first focal plane. So if you see the hash mark, subtension just below the main crosshair, if I zoom this reticle, you'll see it jumps to the center and that hash mark Bruce has got, which is a 100 meter holdover, if you like, for his 60 meter zero, that got slightly bigger. So that's first focal plane. And move it again, four, four times zoom. You'll see that hash mark went down. So that's first focal plane hash mark. And back to eight. So it's the best of both worlds. You've got overall a second focal plane reticle, but any actual graduations or hash marks, any subtensions are first focal plane. So let's show you some other reticles. Get the menu back up. So reticle one, reticle two uh, is quite, quite clear, very sharp, crisp lines. So four stadia, vertical and horizontal, and a dot in the center. That one's a T, which would probably be my preference when shooting. Very similar to my favorite reticle with the pad double LRF. Reticle four, and this is another first focal plane reticle, but only the subtensions are first focal plane. And reticle five, that's basically a square box with some uh, gaps and a dot in the center. So that's quite a cool one. I'll just go back to this one. Okay. And go back and go back. So reticle four, lots of subtensions. And don't ask me what they are regarding minutes of angle or, or whatever. We haven't got that sussed. But if I zoom two times, the crosshair jumps to the center of the screen. And you'll see that the subtensions have moved further apart. If I zoom to four times, further apart again, and eight times further apart again. So the subtensions within the straight horizontal and vertical stadia are first focal plane. The stadia as a whole is second focal plane. Brilliant. Regarding the reticle with a single subtension, which was back to reticle one this one so bruce has got the center of the screen set for 60 yards the subtension just below it is for 100 yards so 60 yards and 100 yards i'll show you there'll be a video coming in a second from bruce when he was zeroing this so he said it was easy to zero at 60 yards and then he moved the target back back to 100 yards and set that lower hash mark but when you're actually recording with the tq50c hash mark subtensions and you can put up to five of those although sadly they can't be numbered or lettered the hash marks don't show so you'll see when bruce is shooting the hot hands bag you can't see the horizontal subtension that he's aiming on but uh, still an excellent idea and i'll be experimenting with this with my air rifle when i zero it so that's five reticles two of which are first focal plane uh, so uh, No, a very, quite a warm car over there. Some people in the background, a few hundred meters away. Nice and crisp. It has dried up a little bit. There's no, I can't feel any drizzle at the moment. Another car over there. So, I wanted to show you the stadia, and the menus and the reticles, but uh, I thought best to do it here with at least something in the background. So that's the OSD popping on and off via the central hotkey. 
the menu button and long press on the zoom button and that's your reticle, your stadia, your crosshairs, on or off. Okay, I hope that gives you some overview of the menu functions. Over to the footage now of Bruce, his zeroing, and we'll have a separate video with Bruce and another friend of his, Neil, controlling rabbits, and then I'll hopefully get some pest control done over the next few days. Once I've zeroed the TQ50C tomorrow night at Gark on my FX Wildcat. And if anyone wants to buy my FX Dreamline Bottle Pop, it's for sale. If you look through FAC rifle listings over on the Airgun Forum, and it's sitting right now at Ethan Bank RFD, ready to be sent to the RFD of your choice. It's a bargain price, just over a grand. That's about a third off, basically. So hopefully someone will buy it soon, and then I can move on to my next rifle that I want to do more experimentation with. Here Bruce is zeroing the Hick Micro TQ50C on his rimfire rifle and he's doing this at the private range up north west of Ellen run by Ethan Bang Fields Sports Supplies. The link's in the description. In addition to the very cool fact that you can glimpse the trajectory of the bullet out to 60 and 100 yards, you can also see the sparkle effect here whereby in white hot mode the hot hands bag is glowing white and when over the hot hand hands bag the reticle goes black. It's a very fine reticle, but we believe it's one pixel wide, superb for precise aiming and zeroing. So here, the only thing missing is Bruce's subtension hash mark, which basically assists him getting his holdover spot on when he changes from 60 yards to 100 yards. He can see it through the viewfinder, but the TQ50C doesn't record it with the video. One of the function I meant to tell you about is the camera button, a single press, records a JPEG, a longer press, and you have video recording, top left, start or stop. And a quick press, it's a short press of the power button to wake the unit up. It doesn't take long to set, wake up either. Another quick press and it goes into standby mode, but it gives you three seconds warning. So if you don't want to put it, you can wake it up by pressing the button again. That's all that the menu is explained. Hope that makes sense to everyone but i should say not only was neil so impressed with this fella uh, the other night shooting about 100 rabbits that he left it on one time zoom i.e as you see here and he was shooting rabbits out to 100 yards and he didn't bother using the digital zoom because it was the clarity was that good i hope that was interesting and informative for you i'll be getting more spotter footage with it hopefully uh this afternoon and this evening and then i'll be zeroing this on my fx wildcat at Gark to bring you some pest control footage. There's going to be a standalone pest control video with approximately 130 rabbits that Bruce and Neil got with a TQ50C, plus whatever I can encounter next day or two with this zeroed on my Wildcat before I give it back to Bruce. And just to clarify, I'm not returning this scope to Stuart Grant at Elite Optical. Bruce was so impressed, and this hasn't happened before. He's discussed it but he shied away from it bruce was so impressed with the hick micro tq50c he's actually bought this one so he's now pacing back and forth he wants this back to use it he's kind of letting me finish the review videos then it's going from here to bruce onto his foxing rifle to be used and of course the place to keep up up to date with all things uh, night vision and thermal is the uk night vision forum and the associated thermal hunting forum which is an international for for forum as well um, and there, Bruce is Phoenix, I'm Russ Douglas 222, but there Bruce will keep you up to date with technical details of all his reviews and his assessments and his findings, uh, what's and all, good and bad, see you on there. Thank you for watching.